Yeah, baby. I pulled in a Nazareth. I was feeling about half past dead. I just need some place where I can lay my head. Hey, mister, can you tell me where a man can lay his head? Oh, I got to retake. I pulled in a Nazareth, was feeling about half past dead. Just need some place where I can lay my head. Hey, mister, can you tell me? Where a man might find a bed Just grinned and shook my hand And no is all he said Take a load off Fanny Take a load for free Take a load off Fanny And you put the load right on me I picked up my bag when looking for a place to hide When I saw Carmen and the devil walking side by side I said, hey Carmen, come on, let's go downtown And she said, I gotta go, but my friend can stick around Take a load off Fanny, take a load for free Take a load off Fanny And you put the load right on me Go down, Miss Moses There's nothing you can say It's just old Luke and Luke's Waiting on the judgment day Well, look, my friend What about young Anna Lee? Said, do me a favor, son Won't you stay and keep Annalee company Take a load off Fanny Take a load for free Take a load off Fanny And you put the load right on me Crazy Chester followed me And he caught me in the fog Said I will fix a rack if you take Jack my dog. Said wait a minute, Chester. Now I'm a peaceful man. Said that's okay, boy. Won't you feed him when you can? Take a load off Fanny. Take a load for free. Take a load off Fanny. And you put the load right on me. <laughs> Should I go from the top again or do no! we splice it? Man, yeah. honestly, Thomas, man, you, you're 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 making me reevaluate entry fee to come onto the show. <laughs> Between you, you and and Joshua, the dip, best damn roofer, and everybody else that actually can carry a tune, man, and then play an instrument. It's fun. No, it's thank you and yeah. welcome. This is an absolute Thanks, pleasure man. to have you in the studio, man. Like this is an absolute pleasure. I know we we joked about it. You're a little nervous because it's like, like it's actually oh, happening yeah. right now, right? Oh. There's, and there's another verse, but I didn't do it. No, I get it. But it's but actually a classic tune, man. But yeah. you, you're, you're doing it justice, man. You were totally doing it justice. And I, I love that you did that. Take your time, man. Take your time. I'm being do attacked that. by my guitar. <laughs> I got, it's, it's great to have uh, the man himself into the studio here. And, and you're going to make me feel young now, man. Because <laughs> we, we go way back. You go way, way back in the industry. And I know you brought a lot of goodies. And I do want to yeah. address some th certain things. First of all. I want to say, I know that between our communication on emails, you were asking all the guys that are going to be, we're going to be doing a round table soon uh, yeah. for stickers. This is the actual last sticker of the construction life with hardcore rentals on it. 
All the new Dude. ones don't have hardcore rentals on it anymore. This is the last one. And I found it in my office and I was like, okay, you asked for a sticker for your guitar case? Yeah, so this mine. is yours. I'll give it to you later on after the show. Sweet. Time. But I want to thank you so much for the flowers. My pleasure. I listen. Because you know, I, I did a post and, and I said it's perfectly normal. It's perfectly fine to give a man, a tradesman, flowers. I agree. So I appreciate. Thank you so much for giving me the flowers, Thomas. Thank it's you. My pleasure. Because I'm, I mean, yeah. a little color in everyone's life doesn't hurt, man, at all. Oh, dude. You know what? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, up at the cottage. I'm the geranium man. Uh, every year, red geraniums. Like, wow. You ever thought about getting a different color? No. I, I'm. I'm perfect with this one. That's yeah. how it works. You brought some goodies. We got some water balls, all kinds of stuff. But yeah. I mean, we're gonna have. We're going to go down memory lane here. Like we're going to talk a lot about the history of doll and valve and, and we're going to like you guys are anybody who's in the industry knows who you are in Canada. Yeah. And uh, certain parts of the U S yeah. the other parts of the U S they don't really know us. And it's interesting. You get it and you get succession in the generations of plumbers. Interesting. So we're seeing that now that sometimes these guys like, yeah, I think I've heard of you, but I don't really know who we are. I just, maybe I'm just being naive. I just assume that uh, Europe, I'm assuming the world knows who you are. Or it's, you know, it's sort of and sort of not. Yeah, it's interesting. Really? Yeah. Wow. So we're we're realizing now we got to put a bit of a, you know, change the way we do things. So I'm Hopefully we on, can you know. help with that. I want to help with that. You let me know what you need from us and we'll take care of it. We'll do it. I totally, we were all excited to see each other and I was yeah. excited about getting recorded and, <laughs> and setting everything up. I forgot to get all your deets, but I kind of know all your deets. I mean, it's Dal Valve Limited, right? That's what it is now. It used to be Dahl Brothers Canada Limited yeah. back in the day for years. When did it, it change? Was, uh, 2017. Okay. Um, and, and part of the reason was we had people, you know, going to the U.S., big, big market. Huge. And the Doll Brothers Limited, well, what do you do then? I said, well, are, who are the Doll Brothers? <laughs> well, they were in the founding company. They're guys who founded the company in Denmark in 1867, so they're probably not here. Yeah. <laughs> they started uh, it, planted it. <clears throat> they started it, and, uh, and then after the Second World War, a lot of companies moved operations to North America because everyone now was on edge because of the standoff uh, with with the Soviets, right? Got it. And so they opened an office in Toronto in 1952. I know that they, I'm, I know, I'm convinced they opened wholesale. Uh, it's now Hajoka, but it was Doll Wholesale in the Southwest U.S. I found a picture of a, of a Doll branch in New Mexico about 20 years ago it was the exact same font on the front of the building wow. as, you know, the old font that was yeah, on the front. I remember not, that. Right? Driving by. On. I still drive by that where you guys yeah. were making it. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. 52, they started. My folks came to Canada in 53. And and uh, my dad didn't join. He joined all in 54. So he joined as a general laborer and he had a business degree. So he worked his way up to office manager. I think. I think I have a picture. I brought a picture along with my yeah, parents. They I think were, you have uh, a picture. Are they making on their way to Canada or something there? <laughs> we'll yeah. Fine. Uh, oh, I, there it is. There they are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, mother, that, those are actual folks right there. That, that is actually my mom and dad. My mother ever trusting. Yeah, of course. Didn't even ask like, how are we going to get across the ocean? <laughs> Where just, are we you know, going, uh, Canada? Yeah. <laughs> but there's a actually there's another funny story there. She was visiting my father at his parents' place in Oslo, Norway. Okay. And, um. They were getting, uh, my dad went down to get tickets on a freighter to go across the ocean. And they were coming to Canada. And they're coming to Canada because the, the USA had already admitted its quota of 400 Norwegians for the year. There was caps <laughs> on every country? There were caps. Really? So my dad said, well, let's go to Canada. It's a nice place. And, and that's how you guys ended up here. So he ended up here. So my dad calls. He goes down to he goes down to get the tickets. And he gets told you got to be married. You can't you can't get into Canada if you're not married. He phones my mom and she's at his parents' place and, and he says, "Okay, just be cool." He probably didn't <laughs> say it like that, but you know, <laughs> but it's like you know, don't raise any eyebrows. I need you to come down to City Hall and marry me. And that's how they got married. And that's how they got married. Yeah. How old were they then? Uh, Three. That would have twenty five. Young still. They're 25. They're born a month apart. Yeah. Wow. So that's, uh, yeah. And, and you know, that's uh, worked pretty well. She was from the mountains um, and, uh, you know, right in the middle of the country. And uh, he was from the big city. And so it was, it was kind of funny, like the country girl and the city boy. But you know what? They were, they were, they were. She didn't swipe they right. at work. She no. Was, no, she didn't <laughs> swipe right. She's like, yeah. 
I, I never really, I, I did sit down and do a lot of videos with her when she got, she was in her last year or two. Okay, yeah. So I made some videos to chat with her, but I don't think I never got any, any dirt out of her. So no. they're yeah. long, yeah. long marriage. So it was good that they made that move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it worked out really well. So, so, so it changed. So it's triple W doll valve. Is it doll valve limited.com? It's just doll valve.com. Dot com. Yeah. And then yeah. on Instagram, I mean, there's a few handles, but there's doll valve. And do you want to share and yours? Then, or you don't want to share. I know you want to kind of stay incognito or if you want to share yours. Well, I don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm doll valve. Man. He's the doll valve man. Yeah. It's kind of fun. I'm, I'm having a blast time. There's so many cool people on Instagram. Uh, Plumbers are passionate. It's really, it, I, 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 I posted, when was it? Like just a few days ago. I just posted like bottom line is the professionalism I'm seeing out here is reigniting my passion in the trade. And there know, is a lot. It's nice. I just, you know, I just turned the big six O so I'm, you know, soon I'm going to be given coupons whether I like them or not. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't look 60. No way, man. Not a day over 59. No, yeah. not at all. <laughs> let, let me just share a little few deets and then, and uh, so I got Sean yeah. Sellis' shirt on. Thank you, Sean. He's doing amazing work out in the Milton Georgetown area. I think that's correct. Uh, I also want to shout out to Larry Serpa of key tile. Uh, thanks Larry for being such an amazing supporter of the show and all the content that you share and all the amazing work that you do for tiling and, and stone surfaces and also renovations under key tile co and key surfaces and, uh, find him at, uh, he's in Vancouver of course, and find them online at, at key tile co and also at key surfaces, uh, to book your next project. And his email is info at key tile.ca and his website is triple W key tile dot ca and then of course you can listen to his story on our show right here with uh he's actually a triple threat he's been on the show three times looking forward to your third time uh cool, he's man. been on the show number 267 a show number 244 and show number 219 and we had a lot to talk about tile at that point um but back over to you now yeah. where do you want to start that i mean you kind of gave us the the story of your parents showing up here but yeah when did you first start and I've always said this on the show so, so many times that every great company, and I think you guys are a great company because you guys have influenced the industry, started by simply swinging the hammer, like something simple. You guys yeah. got on the job site and you understood the tradespeople, right? Yeah, so that, that was that was your that was your dad. That's how it all started. I mean, yeah. it, you guys were just like us, but then you had an idea and it just grew. And we're going to get into that. And I'm looking forward to all those origins. But when did you start in it? I got it. Well. The when was the first? I can't remember the first summer. I can tell it was child labor. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely It wasn't illegal. called child labor back then. No, it was called... Work. It was called get to work. <laughs> yeah, get uh, to work. Uh, yeah, you got, you're gonna, just going to get into trouble. So Today's you come generation to the factory. is just titling everything. Yeah. <laughs> we just said get to work. That's all we said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had, a, uh, I had my eyes on... So my, we, were, we, were, uh, we, were, we pulled the trailer around for kicks. My dad had a 17-foot bolt on a trailer. And had like a little seven foot dinghy and like a like one of those really loud like half a horsepower outboard motors, right? Um, anyway, I found in the Canadian Tire Catalog, which was a deal back, big deal back, then, an electric trolling motor. So there was a package, electric trolling motor, marine battery, and a trickle charger. And that was the that was the summer when I was like twelve or thirteen, and I was like packing stuff. Like remember the tube clamps? Yeah, we had an over under scale. Yeah, spent the whole summer doing that or assembling empty boxes. Um, and that was like every day I was like, I'm this much close every week, I'm this much closer. I'm going to have it. What are you a teenager and now? Yes. You're a teenager. Then. I finally, no, no. Then, yeah, I was, I guess I would have been like 12 or 13. So yeah. I would have been just entering, entering teendom. Yeah. Or might have, I might've been younger. I'm trying to think I was, it was absolutely before high school because once high school starts, you care about nothing other than being cool. You're pulling the right? Danny move from Saturday night fever where he puts the, the layaway plan on the shirt and he puts down $5 and he says, I'm going to come back every week and put five more dollars until I get that shirt. I really want that shirt. <laughs> and it, and let me, and then I got it. It was like, yes. And the funny thing was in that tiny little dinghy, with that electric trolling motor going full on, it was still slower than the 17 foot boat and dead slow, just gears engaged. But let me tell you, where you we, bought it and it was yours. It was kick ass. Yeah. It was amazing. Like the things, one night my buddy and I went out, we were up somewhere. It was at night and we putted in this electric. Nothing can hear. We went into this little inlet where no other boat could go, maybe a kayak, but uber quiet. We had a, a spotlight. My dad had Jerry rigged some nice open hard wire to the battery. That's how perfect car safe. that day. Perfectly safe. <laughs> Turned it on. You should have seen the wildlife right before it scattered. Just so stuff like that, like yeah, memories yeah, you yeah. have. And it goes back to, and I guess steering back into, you know, working at the company and you know, I'm being told, you know, yeah. Okay. Guess what? 
you're the lowest person in the hierarchy in this building. Did you walk in thinking you're the tallest person in the business? No. You didn't have that mindset, no, right? I didn't. When I, when I came back in 92, I ruffled some feathers because I had been in different work and I came in and I wasn't as, I wasn't as, I wasn't as diplomatic as I could have been sometimes. Now, there were also, at the time, I'll say there were some people I felt were taking advantage of my father's good nature. So okay. there was a balance there. And then once I got my head out of my butt, um, because, you know, like my father would just keep saying, Thomas, you catch more bees with honey than vinegar. And he's right, right? It's just, you know, trust, and there's trust and verify. There's all of it. Like, Well, when, when something grows, more people get attracted to it, yeah. and then more opinions get attracted to it. Yeah. Some are good, some are bad. Exactly. You kind of just got to weigh everything, right? You have people who join your company. You have no idea what kind of culture they've come from. Yeah. And so they already come in with their defense mechanisms up, right? All of us have baggage. We all have life experience. Yes, uh, you know, of course. That, so, but, um, but yeah, that was... 92 was when I, so then, oh, okay. So I finished high school, didn't want to go to university. I hated school. I, sorry, mom, school's dad. No, but school's not for everybody. It, it, it Life is school. Yeah, hallelujah. Right? So I was there. I worked, um, I, I was the gopher in shipping, and then I drove the truck in the afternoon, and the city truck doing deliveries in Toronto. So, um, And you're still doing that today. And, and that's, <laughs> let me tell you, it wouldn't change a thing. You ought to hear the oldies station. <laughs> You know, that's, it was, it's not an A track, is it on the forklift? No, it's not. Well, it's not so bad, is it? I mean, it might be. And we can't joke about the stuff. Like, there's guys I'm sure that are chuckling about like stuff they did in factories just for kicks. But it wasn't the smartest thing in the world. I mean, we we water skied behind the tow motor, right? Because the glazed floors. We, we yeah. all did that. I mean, yeah. I, I've had a warehouse job before, and you're just you're thinking of creative ways of doing things with things that are not designed for creative ways. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. They just, yeah, they really should make us wear like anklets or, or necklaces that just shock us and put us to sleep gently. There should be a yeah. bunch of stickers on the back of all these pieces of machinery that say, do not attempt, do not attempt, do not yeah. attempt. Right? Exactly. And, and then we, like, you'd be standing there going, does it say do not or does it say do not? <laughs> and you know, They're challenging me. My philosophy is that stickers like that are, are created for people who won't read them anyway. So <laughs> exactly. Right. I think what they should do is take us to the vet, sew a chip in our <laughs> neck, so when we get anywhere near that equipment, it just won't start. <laughs> right. But, but we got to do our job. Which is the which is is always fun because ultimately, as much as we joke around, you know, we all took pride in you know, getting things done properly, time to clean, time to fix. Uh, customer needs something done fast. We've got, we used to, you know, have challenges. Look, holy moly, look how many orders there are. Let's get them all out today. And and that was fun. Wasn't that juice though for you as a young kid in the business just getting started and seeing that more and more orders were coming in? It, realizing, it hang on, this is growing the business. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's actually, it's not just about, oh, we got a lot of work to do. This is growing the business. That was, but at that, I gotta, I'll be honest. At that point in my life, I wasn't really, I, 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 I wasn't, I still didn't have my head together. Um, Who does? It's true. Nobody does. I went off, went to school, left school. Again, it was like, um, What were you out. studying? Well, I'm curious on what you were studying. Oh, I, I, was, I was studying uh, uh, automotive marketing, marketing business. Um, but I just, I, I didn't have my eye on the ball and I didn't really have any purpose. I think what I needed, the big breakthrough is I love cars. Okay. So I got into the car business. Oh, you'll love our questions at the end of the show. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the I'm, answers for that one. I'm doing a review. I've been, <laughs> we've been watching, I've had my people watching your people. Uh, but I, uh, uh, so I got in there and I realized, I, and I went to sell, remember Acura came out and it was, and I thought, well, this is cool. This is a Honda upline. This is like 80. Yeah, this is 87, 87 when I joined. Yeah, them. Yeah, okay. yeah, Wow. And what I learned quickly was that no matter what you're selling, it's merchandising transportation. There's a whole different world of specialty collector. That's, a, that's where you'll get the people who appreciate the difference between a McPherson strut suspension and a double wishbone suspension. Uh, the other people, they're just like, oh, it looks like a nice car. It looks like it should do it. And, but that's great as long as it's reliable and it does what I need it to do, then please, I don't want to hear about the variable intake manifold. It's very nice of you, young man. <laughs> does it cringe when you can tell someone's not driven 
a car that they're talking about. Oh. You know what I mean? When they're clearly just BSing their way through. Yeah. Oh, and, and this oh, it's yeah. funny that you bring this up yeah. because it's relevant to construction, yep. right? Yep. Like we can tell you having a conversation. When we first met, we just started talking. Yeah. We were yeah. just talking. Yep. And yep. I, I think you could tell that I knew a thing or two about construction. Absolutely. And I definitely knew that you knew a thing or, thing or two about manufacturing and par- things that I needed in construction. So we connected. Yeah. So it's like, that's why it's relevant to that point where it's, Fine, you can read as many books as you want. You can take a look at as many brochures as you want. But until you get your hands dirty and you're a part of this industry, you will not be able to speak our language at the tone of our language. Absolutely. Right? So that's Absolutely. what I was trying to get at with that point, right? And it's true. That's very true. There was a, a teacher once for one of the classes I went to because he was a really cool teacher. <laughs> it's called World Culture and Custom. And he, someone out there that actually knows this quote will probably correct me, but the gist of it, uh, I said there was a, a Chinese proverb that said, you can study an apple all you want, but until you take a bite out of one, you won't know what it is. Uh-huh. It's true. It's very, very and true. It, yeah, it is true. So it's it's. Uh, so it was good to come back. So I so here I am in the car business. Left to go to the car business. Yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, that's and that's a different animal, and it's a, it's a whole like how many people like to go in and buy a car old school from a car dealer. It's it's an experience, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Um, so I went through, a, a, tried a few different things, and then my dad was looking for someone uh, for a shipper. The paycheck title was warehouse manager. <laughs> make no bones about it. You're the shipper receiver and whatever else needed to Take be Take this order and make it happen. Yeah. So uh, you know, one of the guys said, you know, Thomas isn't happy doing what he's doing. Why don't you ask him? And, and at that point, having been out there, I'd realized, you know, my dad really – He's a really honest man. He was a, like principled, business on a handshake kind of guy. No BS. Um, and he sat down and he said, "Okay, well, I can give you a shot." But so you still had to this, interview. Well, well I mean, was it was at the was it it was, it was at the kitchen table. It was and it was more than you know. I know it was not horrible, but it was basically you know when your father says you can't come in here and like you got to you got to you got to be here this time. Because I had been in temporarily driving the truck, then I, bu- you know, buzzed off to school, and and I was like, because he said, "You sure you want to stay here and le- learn the business?" And I was like, "No, I'm going to go out and make a trillion dollars, and I'm going to be like, you know, in the Mediterranean on the Côte d'Azur by the time I'm 29." Uh, and it was October 2nd uh, uh, in 1982, which uh, I was 29 when I showed up as a. As the warehouse manager, the new guy, as the new guy, and it was it was cool. I mean, I learned a lot of stuff, and um, it was yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. But I do want to shout out to my dad one cool thing that when so when he came to Canada, he joined Dolly, worked his way up to office manager, and then the uh, the original doll company in Denmark was founded in 1867. Oh wow! In nineteen um, in 1960, the last active all family member in the business drowned in a boating accident in the Mediterranean and here's a family business three generations old and they set about uh, selling it off they wanted to selling the Canadian operation I don't know what happened with the other ones but and, and apparently they were going to take it public and such and, and it now is quite a big company um, and they went to my father and I said do you want to you know, into it you know, do you want to get out there no they went they said could you get out there and, and sell this for us sell the company and he um, he went back and he sat down and he went back to them and said, well, you know, you've got all this inventory that is selling at a loss. So you have a losing proposition here. Um, if you pay me a nominal sum, I'll, I'll take it off your hands and you can forget about it. They smiled politely and made a deal where he paid them. <laughs> but he paid them, uh, he made three, three payments of, of $5,000. But this is in 1960. Dollars. Yeah. And in 20, I did the calculation roughly. In 2015, that would have been 120,000. So it was it was a company with inventory that was selling at a loss, and they had they did not own a, the land. They didn't own a building. They had essentially they had no assets other than inventory, inventory. that was that that was losing money and eight years of goodwill. 
So he moved them out into Etobicoke. Um, there's a Burfasco on the north side of the QE as you come in. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, that, that used that, to be, though. Yeah. I think it was 58 Queen Elizabeth Boulevard. Okay. That's, uh, in fact, it's at the bottom of that, that one old letter I showed you. Yeah. Um, and, and he started off having three valves made. Uh, compression stops, copper to copper, female to female, both half inch and the half inch sediment faucet. He had them made in Italy by a company called Katzeniga. And once those, once the market was proven with those, then he bought the lathes, manual lathes, and he made a deal with the company to produce, uh, I think it was Neptune, it was a foundry to produce the castings. And the manufacturing started in Canada. I think it was, I used to think it was around 65, but it's 63. I love that the manufacturing, like, it started here. I love yeah. that. It, so it's, I was getting into that thing where, you know, we are, you know, it is dull since 1952, but mm -hmm. it's, it's our family since 1960, and it's manufacturing since 1963. So I, but I get really, I split hairs because I don't, I feel like I'm misleading you if I say manufacturing since 1952. Not us. But, you know, now, now that I realize how old I am and I have a dose set full of pills and I have orthotics, <laughs> I realize 1963 is a pretty long time ago. <laughs> it's a long, long time ago. It's, it's I guess it's, it's uh, 60 years this year, eh? I'm wow. Yeah, now we're going back in time. I still feel young yeah. talking to you, man. Let me, let me, I got to do, uh, let me do a little history and construction. Sure. Um, the word plumber came to be derived from Latin word plum bum for lead yeah. yeah meaning lead as in lead pipes the word plumber gradually came to mean a person who installs pipes so you can thank the romans for the origin of that word uh from plum bum uh came plumbaris a worker in lead a meaning that held up uh through old french uh plumber plumier which became uh in the 15th century uh the english word plumber so it actually travel. Why is plumber pronounced plumber without the B? The word plumber originated from Old French word plumier, uh, which has no B. As you can see, the loan word plumber, plumier, has no B in it. The written B was added during the Renaissance when inte intellect realized that the French word was itself derived from the Latin word, which had a B, which is plumbaris, and that's why it has a B. That's cool. I thought that was interesting. Uh, when was the word when was the word plumbing invented? More than a thousand years ago, the Romans built water channels, as we know, that carried water from the mountains into the city, which distributed through the underground supply lines made of lead. That is where the term plumbing originated, as in plumus in the Latin means lead. Everything's back to lead. What is the slang for plumber in different uh, parts of the world? So plumbers have lots of nicknames. Pipey is one you often hear. I've never heard of pipey. I haven't heard of it. Uh, Mario is occasionally thrown, I guess. So that's right? getting big now with the movie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, thrown about uh, other trades, and then there's also Super Mario, which is any uh, when you're really good with plumbing, and cool. uh, when you're a spanner. So I don't even know where these a spanner is a wrench, span. though. Yeah, I don't understand where that that connection is. But Pipey and Mario, okay. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that. So we have that. That's kind of fun. Um, I love history stuff. <laughs> it really, you know. I love discovering certain yeah. things and where it all came from. But it's funny Absolutely. that whenever in the construction, we're talking to our trades and like, yeah, you, where's the plumber? Where's the plumber? There's no B in that. It's about the Latin. Yeah, here's a fun fact. I studied Latin for five years. Really? And French for six years. But I never lived anywhere where they speak French, so... I crash and burn. Take I, a bite of the apple, Thomas. You got it, man. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm full. You know, no, I'm, my brain is full and my stomach is empty. But it would have been, I was on a chairlift with a guy a thousand years ago and I tried to speak French. And he, he, and he right. just rolled his eyes. He just said, he said, it's okay, I can speak English, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so. Then you know something's up. Yeah. I want to ask you, Thomas, at what point when you were warehouse, um, did you realize that this is for you. I think what, what coming back to the company after being away and, 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 and looking at the, the commitment that I saw, like from my father and I, and I, I learned a thing about perseverance. Okay. Um, and that's one thing when I see some of these young guys on Instagram, they know it already. Like they, you know, like that's like kudos guys. Um, but that was probably understanding that, you know, the tortoise always beats the hare. Uh, and, 
it's it's just it's just better that way yeah, yeah. and it, as i was out looking around i'd been in the car business and i looked around i saw a lot of people that were that just didn't give me the confidence that they would be there in the clutch when things got tough and those are the only people i want to work with yeah so that that sort of that sort of opened my eyes cuz that that uh and then that really starts to feel good. And the best thing I can say, the, the, the best feeling I get about our business is helping someone. Like that, just that one person. And we always, you know, we, and we, we circle back every once in a while. So it doesn't matter how many pieces we sell and cases and pallets of stuff. You got to remember, these trickle down oftentimes to someone's home. And it might be the only doll valve they have in their home. And it gives them a problem. When they call... You treat them like they're the they're the only person they're in the, the world only, that matters. Yeah, you know, the so only customer. Yeah, and that's a, that's a, that gets on my pet peeve about all these modern customer service things that are just to me are cop outs to doing business properly. But I, they're looking for loopholes to try to get out of it, and they're trying to point yeah. fingers. And it's just how about we just yeah. solve it? Yeah, that's a, and when I, when you, I'm sure we have all the experience where you, you call a company for help. And thank you for calling. Press. One press one, two, three, four, and thank you for your selection. Yeah, please enjoy the following 47 minutes of advertising for products that you have no interest in, <laughs> all in Spanish or French <laughs> or Italian, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Press whichever number you want. And, <laughs> and then at the end, it goes, Was this helpful? Yes, if not, why yeah. don't you try a user form? Fill out a survey. <laughs> Just like pick up the phone. We man. we were all been through that. It's <laughs> insane. Like, how about we just shake a hand and just get the job done? I'll lead to that. That's it. Yeah, and that's it's the basics. And I believe that the, there are small companies, and I think that's going to be the strength of small companies. And that's why I don't always worry too much about the big, big, big companies. They have their place. Uh, but again, come back to all these tradespeople. I'm sure they're answering the phone. Is it, it must be good for you because I, I also feel the same way. It's like when we started seeing a bunch of the big box come in, I guess this would have been... Late 90s. Late Aiken 90s. Heads. Yeah, late 90s. Aiken heads, late 90s. Yeah. The, the millennium trying to change or whatever. You saw these big box coming in. Yep. Mom and pop still survived. Yeah. And you got to start wondering. And I'm sure that these big box companies probably had several thousand meetings trying to figure out... Why is mom and pop still there? We don't understand why mom and pop is. We're a bulldozer, yeah. but they're still there. And I'm like, you guys are not delivering what the mom and pops deliver. Yeah. That's there, as simple as that. And there is kind of a place for both sometimes. Yeah, for sure. But I, you know, I, I you know, but yeah, yeah. That's, and so what my father always said too. He said, there's a place for everyone in the marketplace. Um, there are there's those that come and go, but there's, there's space. You yeah. just, yeah. And I love that, you know, like we, we talk about this off mic and lots of people send me DMs and it's just, I love the whole community instead of competition mindset. Mm. There's plenty of work out there for us in the construction industry, whether you're stateside or you're in Canada or you're abroad in Europe or whatever. Yeah. There's so much opportunity, right? Oh. You just have to look for it. That's all it is. There is. And, you know, get creative. You know, what can you do differently than someone else? Like some, you don't want to go straight into the price competition with the big boys. We don't. We, we we're just us. We have our, we have our factory over here. You know, we're just you know to the rest of the world. We're just west of Toronto. Yeah. Where's the cameras? Where I look for them? <laughs> you can look at any one of them. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh damn it! Oh, <laughs> forgot to puff my chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh. No, there's cameras on this. Yeah. It's just yeah. not audio it's, anymore. I'm wearing a very heavy sweater under <laughs> this shirt, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the fun thing is for us. Yeah, you have flexibility. Um, it's, it's who we are. There's other, there's lots of, there's so much industry It's ridiculous and they, and people slot in, but we just got our one place and we make everything there. We, we'd still have trouble convincing people. I, guys come back from trade shows and they say, you don't make it there. You just buy a bunch of parts and put them together and so, say, you know, everything's made there. We have flatbed right in our back door. Can you imagine if you had more companies doing that? I wish. I actually wanted to share something. Well, I can't really share too much because I was at a facility this morning in Hamilton, mm -hmm. Ancaster, and um, I was in awe of what they're doing. And, and they're manufacturing something here that's going to be massive. And, and nice. I love the fact that they chose Canada. And they chose it for a variety of reasons. First of all, we have the space. Yep. Big, big country. We've yeah. got lots of land, despite what people are saying that there isn't any land left. Oh, well, there's tons of land. We've got lots of land. Yeah. And I love that this 
right now it's kind of a small entity, but this is going to be huge. And, I, and I'll be working with them and talking to them about what's going to be happening, but that will be revealed eventually, f- fairly soon. But I was in awe. I was just walking into the manufacturing process of this, and I was just looking at this going, this is insane that it's being done right in our own backyard. Completely. That's fabulous. Right? And I love seeing that. And this is like immigrants coming from another place, coming to Canada, setting up shop here, having Canadian tradespeople work on it, and collaborating together. And oh, yeah, producing a product that's being shipped globally. And I'm like, the, I'm like, this is why we need more of this. They come into a place where they can do it. You know the old yeah. saying, it's not, it's, it's not where you were raised, it's how you were raised. Yeah. And then they come here because there's opportunity here to explore that. And then people's lives get better. Yeah. Ultimately, it, it just, you know, we, I, I love seeing that. I love that you're Dolph Out Man on Instagram. And I know that you, you enjoy watching IG and paying attention to. Oh, I really do. Because you can feel the pride coming off the page for a lot of plumbers that are doing their work. And I love yeah. that. I, I think IG has been a double edged sword, but for the most part, when it comes to trades and, and probably plumbers up there, yeah, they take a lot of pride in what they do and they spend that extra effort just to make something that the majority of people, clients, homeowners, designers, everybody else around the, the craft of plumbing. Yep don't really care too much about it. It's not that important. It's not the beautiful rose gold faucet. Yes. Why are you spending so much time and effort making that connection look amazing? Well, you know, if you got the fancy car with a nice hood or horn ornament, you're going to want to kind of hope that the wheels won't fall off <laughs> on the highway, <laughs> which is to me, right? That's, you know, it's well, true. You, know, you wake up in the middle of the night. What's that noise? Yeah. Well, the crown molding is still there. The, Granite countertop is, it sounds like water running. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, it's, and the stuff, the st- these guys sometimes are, I'm careful not to be having breakfast, lunch, or dinner because they will post the brutal truth of what they run into sometimes. Sometimes. And, but, you know, we need to see that. Not all the time, but to really appreciate, you know, what happens, like the toilet explodes. Call a plumber. Oh. That's not a nice thing to do, but they go in. They're, you know, and they talk about, you know, the, the, the heroes are the people who are running in when everyone else is running yeah, out. Yeah. They are. That's what they are. Yeah. yeah big but time. I love that. And, and you're seeing that. You're seeing a lot of that pride for their skill set, for their work that they do. And yeah. and I lo- I also love, I would have to say, and I mean, I mean, electricians can jump on board and everybody else can jump on board. But uh, And we got a sense of this when we had some roofers. We did a bunch of shows back, back to back with roofers. And there's a lot of pride when they have the crew together and they're working together. And it's like yeah. different different trades, for, uh, same trade yeah. from different businesses collaborating. Yeah. They, yeah. they get along really well. First of all, everyone's speaking the same language. Yeah. And, and they all want to learn from each other, and they all want to do better to kind of represent the industry. Oh, I see yeah. that a lot in plumbing. It, it's bring them together as ambassadors for, for, of the construction industry to the general public at large. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, and, and, and just breed that integrity. Um, there's, there's, I'm watching it. And I've done some work with some schools and that sort of thing. I don't call anyone out because I don't know what's allowed and what have you. But the, the bottom line is um, there's a lot of pride. And the other thing I like is that, you know, you go far enough back. If you were a young person trying to cut your teeth, well, you were officially an idiot for the next decade. Right. And you would be no matter you could you could cure cancer yep. and you probably get, what are you stupid? Shut up. Go empty the garbage. It's like, no, but I, I think I've got it. <laughs> Whereas today, I think people would listen. Yeah, and they're like, right. you're kidding me. And that's... That's the difference. That's the difference. And that's primo. A uh, lot of people getting into the plumbing trade? Are you seeing a lot of people choosing that trade? I don't have statistics. No, no I'm, I'm just curious. I'm always, see, I know they yeah. jump into HVAC. I think that HVAC is kind of the front runner. Yep. And I think they're followed closely by plumbing and electrical. Um, I think those top three are the, are the ones that a lot of trades are getting into uh, because there's lots of opportunity on so many different levels. So you can get yeah. into the commercial and the industrial, the residential, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, and they're different worlds too. For the, from a plumbing trade, they're completely different worlds. Big time. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I've, I've looked very sort of like in my head. I've looked at, hmm, look at the, the, the big things that you might deal with. 
Um, and it is a, you know, you look at if you're HVAC, now you have to be a bit of an electrician and a gas fitter and a bit of a plumber. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you're an electrician, you're, I don't know if you deal with anything other than, than electricity, but being electrocuted. You get into is, home and security and fire. Okay. Yeah. So you get into a lot of those worlds if you want to expand your arsenal. So there's opportunity there as well, too, which just gets your mind running. Like you, if you're a problem right. solver, which most tradespeople are. Yeah. You naturally gravitate towards it. Uh, you're right. I've got my electrician putting Cat 6 cable in my yeah. place, right? Yeah, so that's what they do. And then if you're a plumber, not only is it a huge amount of work and a lot of, a lot of physical work, you have to deal with everyone's shit. Literally. I couldn't resist. <laughs> I, I, one of my first jobs I ever did was uh, tying into clay on an old house. Like clay drainage? Clay, like, like clay. Yeah, drain. And then having to cut it and then wow. talking to the client and saying, listen, do not use a toilet for the next two, three hours because we're working. And then cutting the, the, the pipe clean, yeah. hoping that it cuts clean. Yeah. And then hearing that water flush. And you're like, wait a minute. They just told. And it's natural for a client to forget that they said, sure, we won't use it. But then you're in your house and you're walking around. And you go, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And all of a sudden we hear that water flowing. You're like just panicking, right? You're, it'll be coming around the mountain <laughs> when it comes. <laughs> Lucky for us, it was just number one, okay. right? But still, it's just, and, and plumbers get a lot of flack for that, right? But they do sure. save the day. Like you get a lot of guys that, and girls that come into the industry and they'll service. And service is like saving the day. Oh, it, yeah. Services to me is, it, it, it's, uh, it's the infrastructure. Like the, yeah. the, the building... Obviously, it's all important. Like for me to go one way or another, it would be like, what do I know? Yeah. Honestly, right? I mean, there's, you know, we all know a little bit. Amongst all of us, we're all, we're the wall, but we're all bricks in the wall, right? Yep. Um, but service, you got to keep that stuff going. It's good to fix things. I mean, it's, you know, it is sustainability. That's, uh, I mean, you know, you, you, that, and that's a topic, but I used to see it in all forms. There was a gentleman who worked for us for 41 years. And he would come to lunch with his lunch in a paper bag. And after lunch, he would fold up that bag and he would take it home. And I don't know how long he would make that bag last, but I'm going to venture to say he probably made that bag last at least a couple of months. I yeah. kid you not. Yeah. Just and So that I found that, I found that to be quite Is that just like getting older kind of thing? Because I've been catching myself just kind of, collapsing things a certain way after it's empty and discarding it from that right when i don't need it is that just like because i never did this in my 20s or 30s he was younger but different generation of different that. generation huh? you look at yeah you, you know even i was talking to my dad once about all the cost of living blah 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 going on and my dad said you know what we fixed our own clothes yeah we built things ourselves yeah i even built toys for you yeah um i don't like no you need all this extra stuff and brand name. Like, you know, I had, you know, that's true. So I, it, I remember my dad building a fence. He built it in the garage. Neighbors hated him. He didn't have a gun. So it was, I don't know what you call them. Hammer, hammer. They're like, I don't know, like half by ones or something, and they're pointed, and you yep. weave them between. You have yeah. the low board and the high board. Yeah. Okay. So we lived, he moved way out. So he had a half acre property because uh, he, he bought it, like, again, way early. And um, so, yeah, you put you the top and then it weaves under the backboard and you're alternating. Did he do like over, did he do about uh, 200 linear feet of this all with a hammer in the garage at night after work? And, yeah. Got it done. <laughs> and the, the whole neighborhood, the, the echoing of his hammer. Oh, it's him again, building his damn fence. Is he ever going to be done that thing? <laughs> <laughs> You can imagine the What do they say when the fence is all installed and it was completed? Like, oh. Uh, we like, wouldn't, we nice. wouldn't mind having. That's, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you, have you thought about? No. <laughs> I just, How many times is that tr question asked of a tradesperson? I've had that all the time oh. when you're doing work on your own place and people walk by. Do you do that for a living? Nope. Yeah, that's nope. what I would. No, but I saw you on, so on social media. Nope, that wasn't me. Doppelganger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, don't I just read there's seven versions of me anywhere in the world at any given time. I'm just one of seven. That's all it is, right? So that wasn't me. Well, there, and there have been some funny posts on social media, right? About, 
people are like getting around it or, or, or the awkwardness and you, you decide to do something for a friend and it's like, and then, then it's time to pay. I'm like, oh, which is too bad. You know, I've, I've, I've worked with a couple of friends and here and there on simple things, but I, I generally split it. I stay away from it. Of I course. You know, it's, it's like, you know, I don't know why. if it, if there's more complexity to it, right. The, uh, like, like my neighbor, up at my place is a general contractor and I thought about him, but then I thought I'd rather not in case there are Something. points of contention. Something, I'd, yeah. I'm going to be living here, living my years out here. I'd rather be, you know, laughing about the Leafs choking again over a beer and a burger than, you know, remembering the something that just went wacko on the job. And, but we shouldn't talk about the Leafs. And says, no, oh, no, because you're going to upset or you're going to make other people laugh or whatever, right? But everyone's expecting it, and it, it is what it is, and that's it. Just leave it out of that. Sports, right? Yeah. So I know that you left, you came back, you left, you came back, and now you're there. But obviously yeah. in the back of your head, you must be thinking, Tom, it's like handing this off, and who's going to be handling it, and where is it going to go, and what's going to happen, and what's the future, and... Yeah. All those, have you answered any of those questions? Not really. We, although we now we put some structure in. Like right now, we we do have an executive team. We have a president. Okay. Of the company. So we, you know, so we mentor and we're on the board. Um, we're we're pretty involved, but we try to strike a balance. I know sometimes they probably want to tell us to go pound salt, and and, and we have to look ourselves in the mirror every once in a while, and you know we, we'll talk to each other. Everyone's like, okay. Let's hold off on that and not. Um, Usually it's just because it's our passion for the company. Yeah. But, you know, again, we have, to, we have to think from the standpoint, if I was there, would I want someone doing that to me? You know, or to what degree would it be okay for someone to yep. assist? So, um, but, you know, I, I just look at it as a long way away. So what we're trying to do is set up the company for succession with the right culture. So even now, if both of us got fish trucked, for some reason, then it's strong and continues because there are, you know, there's so many people, there's so many, I mean, there are employees and customers, sales agents. I just, it goes through that. Sure. We'd probably get absorbed by someone else, but there's people who like us for who we are as a company and what we do. It, my biggest fear is that, um, the company would be changed. The values would change. Then all of a sudden they'd come out with the, you know, something that isn't us um, and that's the thing about your product i mean me being new in construction when i had to first handle a valve or make that decision on how am i going to terminate this these supplies you just you go and you buy it for the very first time and you look at it and you hold it and you're like you're you're confident that this is going to work so then you're like happy with the quality of it. And because you use it and you just turn it and you're like, is that really just what it is? And then you're like, yeah, actually you don't need to modify it because it's already perfect. Like it just works. Right. So then I was sold from that point. And I took That's that cool. same mindset on other products as well and other brands that, and then unfortunately for brands that I don't work with or I don't use or whatever, it's the alternative, right? Because you, you hold it, you touch it, you use it and it, that you're not confident at that point. Right. That's where it is. And I think that a lot of people in the business, trade-wise, they do the exact same thing. We go back to, you know, you've got to hold it and you got to try it out, right? And so that's yeah. why I was I was like, and that's why I was curious about it because obviously you've been thinking about that and you're trying to figure out where it's going to go. Um, I want to share a little bit of OBC talk and mm -hmm. then I want you to get into history here and I want to start talking about these origins of the, uh, the valves there. But let me share a little bit of OBC talk. Uh, water distribution systems. You change the chairs there? Oh, is that much better? Well, you know, <laughs> I didn't know the chair was bad. We could have, we got plenty of chairs. Here. My farm oh, stool. Oh, you're on the farm stool. That's yeah. why. It's, like, it's good for uh, change. It's good for putting on the steel toe boots at the farm. There you and go. And for playing guitar in, uh, <laughs> in, in this uh, deluxe studio. Studio. Yeah. Uh, except as provided in sentence two of the code, which is 7.1.5.3 under the water distribution systems, every water distribution system shall be connected to A, a water main that is part of the municipal drinking water system, or B, to a drinking water system if the water main described in Clause A is not available. You figure that, eh? And here in Canada, hot's on the left, cold's on the right. 
in the UK, hot's on the right, cold's on the left. Of course. <laughs> well, we drive on the wrong side of the road. They drive on the right side of the road, right? Well, I know some history on that, oh, too. I know. I know that, too, as well. Oh, come on. Storm sewage and gray water that is free of solids and treated to conform to Article 7.7.4.4 is permitted to be used as water supply for water closets aka toilets, urinals, subsurface irrigation, the priming of traps, trap seal primers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, rainwater that is free of solids and treated to conform to Article 7.7.4.1 is permitted to be used as water supply for clothes washers, laundry trays, mop sinks, bedpan washers, water closets, urinals, hose bibs, subsurface irrigation, the priming of traps, Piping uh, conveying the non-potable water described in sentence two shall be installed in com com uh, conformance with section 7.7. It's a little bit of building code talk. We just share it. I don't know it's what that means. I just hook up the toilets and I hook up the sinks and that's all. <laughs> I don't get into diet, that, that. So www.dollvalve, it's sorry, dollvalve.com. Yep. Um, history, Thomas. Let's get down the road. History. I want, right. I want you to show the audience, and I'm hoping that people are watching the show instead of just listening to it, but you've got some goodies there. Some uh, origins, man. Talk about the origins here. Yeah, some of the origins. So, yeah, so, okay, so I told you I started off with the manufacturing in, in Etobicoke. I feel bad that you were sitting on the stool the whole time because I was enjoying the tune. No, <laughs> this is, uh, that's, uh, what do you call that, natural selection? I have a bruised butt because I was too stupid to get off the stool. No, you can speak <laughs> up. There's no rules here. Speak up. Yes. No, I'm gonna say no. I'm, I gotta. I gotta. Now I, you're comfy. I, I gotta. I gotta step up. I, I mean, I, I had a chair right here. I was sitting on a stool. You provided me with a chair. You provided me with water. A deluxe mic, headphones. Test, test, test. <laughs> get us get any better? No, it's all so, good. So, the presentation box. Now we've got that uh, that that letter that went out. Oh yeah, where's the so, letter that you sent me? Yeah, so, so we this got was letter. this was the presentation. So that box. letter was attached to this presentation box. No, no, just just to mess with you. Okay, but this is a box. I think they had it shows. How like, long? I, I how far back are we through. talking about here? This would be 1963. Wow. Once they started making them here, so this was the the three valves. There's a uh, so yeah. Oops. Sorry, yeah. Bring the mic with you. Let's yeah, stay no. with the mic, Phil. Yeah. 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 Um, copper to copper compression stop, female to female compression stop, and a sediment faucet. Look at that. Huh? That's that's still the original. I mean, there's little bits and pieces of differences. This is you uh, can you can install that tomorrow. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't know if you can feel the feel feel the action on this. Just just uh, this that was. Oh look at that, eh? Like look at that. It's the first time it's been out of that case in ages. And I, you know, I go into these stores and I, I I feel the inventory of similar products. And I'm not to bash other products. No, no, right? no, no. But my thing is, this is it's not what they do. It's what we do. And I just want more people to feel the butter. That's all you do. That's like what I was saying, smooth. that when you first grab it. Exactly. And yeah. it's smooth, man. Yeah. Smooth. So, you, you know, there's there's no need to fight. Just this was 63? 63. 63. Yeah. And to this day, now we have lots of infrastructure, especially in Ontario and Quebec. Because, uh, again, we were not this big, big company. Um but you come across any of those valves from 63 onward, you can, we still have the replacement cartridge for it. Really? Yeah, you can, you can, you can, yeah, if the casting is good, you can, you can just take this take off that out. and we'll send you a new one that goes on. The difference is it has the, that we now have a spring loaded self adjusting ca uh, packing system. Yeah. But, but that doesn't matter because that's in here. But that's, that's a different story. But long amazing. story short, that's no, yeah. that's amazing that you still guys, you guys are still producing that. It's it's uh, it's kind of fun, I have to say. But you know, in some ways, it's an accident. We um, see. This is what yeah. I mean. Is that like you and I are talking about this, and you know, plumbers that are listening to this, they love this stuff. Like this is amazing stuff. This is our yeah. Cadillac. This is our granite. This is like that's and that's we you know obviously no one no one is everything to all people. Yeah. We just want to know those plumbers or meet those plumbers in Canada and the U.S. who like stuff like this. It's simple, you know, and that's everyone else for sure. I mean, that's, uh, again, if you think you can be all things to all people, I mean, you're, you're sorely mistaken. What is it? Right? Find one thing that you're really good at and just work on that? Stick with it. Well, that's basically know. dull, right? That's yeah. what it is. Simple as that. And we give on our products now, we give a lifetime warranty. Now, someone said, oh, those lifetime warranties, right? As soon as they move, as soon as they lose the receipt. A lifetime warranty. 
to be clear, there's there's wear and tear parts. So the warranty is uh, we warrant uh, defects in materials or workmanship at the time of ma- original manufacture, and that can reveal itself down the road. Of so course. that's happened. Um, but it's for the lifetime of the installation. I don't care how many times the building gets sold to new owners. Uh, we know when the valve was made. And the bottom line is, what does the building care if someone else owns it now? doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. And your name is on the product. Yeah. So when you're looking at it, yeah. you know and, who to call. And we will pay. Um, now it goes to our QA guy, who the claims guy, and with people who analyze stuff. So cause you have to. Yep. Um, um, but we will we'll also pay up to $50 towards the labor cost for replacing the valve. That's nice of you guys. It's, it's, you know, it's not going to, I mean, I know it's expensive to get out there, but it's, you know, I like to make that token to show that we take it seriously. We have a, we have a quarterly meeting. Uh, so we have four meetings a year mm-hmm. where um, uh, my sister and I and the president and the uh, mechanical engineer who heads up all of the failure analysis on all product that gets returned, we sit down and look at all the failure modes that have been reported. And because again, you know, like it, I was saying earlier, if some if one person has a problem with our product, we want to know. Yeah, and and it's, just, it's we were again we were raised that way. So you don't dismiss them. You don't no, no no. It's a big deal. What if you know? I mean, you can drywall fine. You can fix that. You know, but what if what if your valve fails and it d- destroys the black and white photos of your great great grandparents that can't be replaced? You can't get those at the. At, at the wholesaler, it's true. right? It's true. It's very, very true. So we we, we kind of hope that, you know, you know, you know, they say the best warranty is the one you never have to use. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, no one who's ever manufactured anything has got, has battered a thousand and never had a problem. Oh, of course so, not. You know, no. That's how we learn and we figure yeah. out what happened and we make the product even better. As simple as that, right? Yeah. And then you do everything you can to make it right. And, you know, it's, it's, that's never fun, but uh, yeah, we have, a, we have a good, we have a good track record in the field. Um, so we're, you know, and we just, it, it, our thing is just show up every day. Just do your best. We, and, and, you know, just remember that the people who, who end up with these products might just be your neighbors or your own family. So I love that. I mean, we're talking, yeah, 60 years here. And you yeah. guys have the Maple Leaf and then you have the logo, you have your name That's on fun. it. I mean, I love that, that you guys have that. Don't worry, I won't install this. I won't take it. I'll put it back into the box. <laughs> oh, I have men in lab coats and a van waiting out waiting, in the hall. Waiting, waiting. They're gonna, <laughs> pat, they're gonna pat me down. They're gonna knock me down. <laughs> what else we got there? I know you were showing right. some stuff before we got started. Yeah. So this is the stuff. So these things did well, and um, it sold it. I did. So I did sell it. And this, there's more stuff. One day. I, if I don't upset you too much today, I'd come back oh. and show you all the stuff that I oh, dig I out of storage. Stuff. I almost want to take the show on the road and go to you and then just do oh. it there. You know what that I mean? C- that could be fun. We're, yeah. we're pretty secretive about our factory, but I'd like to show you the factory. Yeah, yeah I totally would love um, to do that tour. I love those tours. It's Yeah, it, it is fun. Uh, some of the stuff we've done with the schools, too. And this is one high school in Toronto. We just Which do one? It all the time. Central Tech. Oh, Central Tech, of course. Yeah, you know, do you know Robert? I don't know Robert. No, I've not, I don't he's, think I've ever met him, but Central Tech is still... It's doing what a lot more schools should be doing. Oh yeah, oh, Central yeah. Tech is is educating quite a, a lot of future tradespeople. Big time, you big know. Time. I initially I worked with uh, uh, with Robert Schrader, Peter Mandros, um, and Lisa Edwards. Last time I was there, was she was the principal. Yeah. Uh, and the big supporters and very nice people. We had them all out for a visit. But the fun thing was. He was bringing his second year students. These are high school students. The first time they came out at what are we going to get for high school students? You know, like, are they going to be serious? There was usually one kid in the class who you could tell would rather be somewhere else. But that was a pretty good batting average because really engaged students coming in. And I would, and I would tell them, I said, it's not a sales pitch. This is how it's made. Yeah. Let's go have a look at some cool stuff. Because yeah. I didn't be like, oh, and here, and we'll show you the benefits here of this product. And like, Shut up, old man. Yeah. Look at that machine. <laughs> so, you know. But they, they got it. They understood it that they started realizing that these are like products that we might be using one day. They got that. And and I think my my belief was that showing 
the, the disciplines and precision required to, to, to make something that will be dependable. It, it, I think it does translate into the work they'll be doing down the road. And we, would, and we talked a little bit about that. It's like, look at all this stuff. Well, you got to, this is the due diligence you're going to have to be doing yourself. And it'll be worth it because people will now, after a while, they start asking for you rather than you knocking on doors to see if, you know, someone would like to try your product. And that's, uh, that's generally the, the path of passion, right? Like just stick yeah. with it, and all of a sudden, that was my dad was just a he was like a he he was, I think he was a power source. I think he put power back onto the grid when he walked around. He he uh, like he he dug ditches in North York for MTO his first year in Canada. He uh, uh, he also sold encyclopedia door to door. And back in the day, uh, when he joined Doll, they were the first company with the peepholes. Um, and he went around with the general manager and they had like an old drill and they would like for, he, he told me the pricing. I just like killed those brain cells, I guess. But it was like, you know, three to $5 was the deal if you wanted the security people installed on your front door. And they were just, you know, randomly showing up. Um, and uh, VLUX, okay. VLUX windows, you know VLUX yeah, windows? Skylights, yeah. yeah. Okay, when they first came to Canada, so, so Dahl had their line. Uh, they were a Danish company. When they first brought their windows to Canada, they were hinged in the middle. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. the middle hinge doesn't work well with the screen because they don't have screens in Denmark. No. Or they didn't at the time. So so some of these you know, like fun facts back from the day that these guys were doing. And, um, but they all came to Canada. That's the yeah. thing about it is that we are such a melting pot for manufacturing, right? That's cool. And that's, I, I, cool country. I, why can't, I, I almost feel like it's kind of stopped. And why can't we actually return the favor and start engaging with outside of canada not just the u.s because they're just below us but it's everyone everyone it's it's um um yeah you know it's it's the sooner the more people in the world have food in their belly a shirt on their back and a roof over their head you know the, so true the, the, the better off we'll be and i'm and i'm i mean i have my own belief systems about things i want to get political I, you probably got enough sleep last night without me helping you but <laughs> <laughs> um but that's that's a big deal. Actually, I can tell you. Here's a here's a sidebar. What what inspired me to play the weight by the band? Yeah, was my song. Uh, can I make a shameless plug? Go ahead. You can make okay. as many plugs as you want, Thomas. Okay, playing for change. It's a series on YouTube. Of they get musicians all around the world, and uh, there is a there there is a cover of the weight with Ringo Starr on drums. Robbie Robertson from the band. Wow. And people in good gracious, um, is it Bahrain, Spain, uh, Congo, Jamaica? It would be, it's, it's, depends what you like, right? But at this song, just, I've, I've, it, it just, I've. What's the channel again? It's just on YouTube. Yeah, but what's the channel thing? Oh, it's uh, playing for change. Playing for change. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. And it's quite beautiful because it, and and, and I showed it to Adrian the other night for the first time, and she and and uh, my girlfriend and 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 she was like, "Wow, it's amazing." It's like, it shows you that there are so many like-minded people around the world. Stop with like just, <laughs> you know, it's not doomsday, man. It's one of the best things about social media and this show is having yeah. conversations i was chatting with uh, a, a framer funny enough uh -huh. originally from the uk but living in denmark and i've been paul and he's he listens and and i've been itching to get him on the show and talk and, and he's going to be coming on the show soon but i'm like he finds it fascinating that our conversations are so relevant to his mindset there and also other trades people there right yeah. so it's funny enough how construction has its own language and we all connect with each other yeah. all over the world the fundamentals of geometry don't change no. right the roman aqueducts are at a two degree gradient the same as the drainage spec for just about every building in north america right yeah. they knew a thing or two back then <laughs> they complicated a thing or two <laughs> you know <laughs> they destroyed a thing or two back then as well but you know they did have their opinions, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> we won't make it political. Uh, 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 <laughs> the world rolls on, right? It's it's the rest of us that sort of watch from the sidelines, you know? 
So. But it's I, I I love the love that's for construction. I love having like anyone can kind of communicate with us about this and how yep. you, you you have like you said that channel. It's like everyone is just like minded and you're all contributing to a sole purpose, right? I Absolutely. love that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's it's yeah. It and, and again, this is what I'm seeing. I'm starting to understand in social media. There's different types of social media. I don't. Um, I, well, I'm I'm old and TikTok is quite different. TikTok is um, sometimes TikTok's um, yeah ADHD or whatever. Just like it's just like I should fit in just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, but it, it, it's kind of like that. You're, you're just overwhelmed. It's too much, yes, and it, yeah. it's kind of like when you're consuming. Um, it's it's like I, I almost give it two seconds, if that, maybe one second before I've already lost interest in seeing it. And, and I'm like, okay, I shouldn't be that way because that's not who I am. But, I mean, I, I heard someone recently say, start focusing more on creating content and not consuming content. So just feed it. Just keep on sharing all that. That's why we do so many shows and we just get them out there. Just keep on feeding the shows. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And, and I like that about Instagram because I can keep up and people are putting, th they have some entertaining things. Yeah. And then they, they have uh, they, they have some things that are extremely interesting. And uh, there was a, there, well, here, there was a TikTok feed that okay. someone put on Instagram. And it was showing the, um, the uh, old compressors from early 20th century refrigerators. Oh. That okay. were, that actually the active chemical in them was tear gas. And really? Yeah, it's contained, and essentially, it just—it was like I think it was just. It, it, I, I believe it was a pr principle of thermocycling and mechanical reaction, right? So basically, expansion and contraction, and, and and there you go, and then and that would cause it to cycle. But don't quote me on it, but it, I think it was along those lines, and um, I, I, I see that kind of stuff, and that's well, actually it's quite fascinating because how do, you know knowing how we got to where we are now and it was all experimenting back then they're trying to figure it out and get it all done right yeah i can imagine the guys here take this uh, yeah no it's fine don't worry about it. i know but now you got appliances that are f failing what within seven years five years seven years of failing you buy a brand new one that's, that's a different yeah. economy it's different that's going back political that's what i mean it's just all of a sudden now you're creating products that don't last which is sad because there's no need for that i've got a i've got a water heater that was installed uh, in my cottage in 1987. Still running perfectly fine. Yeah, a buddy of mine said, oh, yeah, it's getting old. But, but the water is so soft up there. Let me tell you. So it doesn't destroy it. You should see. Look, check out my hair. <laughs> look at this. Full body manageability. That's what you get from soft water, man. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice shade. It's not too shiny, is it? <laughs> that's it's a nice shade. Makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 uh, yeah, it's amazing up there how stuff lasts. Um, the the only the only thing you get when you pull water out of a lake is you you, you get like sediment and stuff. That, that's it. And it craps out fill valves and mixing valves. But, but that's actually yeah. a good point that you're bringing up, Thomas. Because I mean, there's a lot of harshness going on in our in the city. Yep. Which puts more stress on your products. Well, we, and we've seen that. We go into different places and we look around different parts of North America even where you have you have products that struggle and you should be exercising the valves in those cases. You know? And if you do that, you're okay. But if you don't, and you know, we've got plated balls and like we've got, you know, we're very proud of the quality we make. Yeah, we've seen situations where it's 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 just really, really I guess tough. Uh, with like out west, BC, water there, it's not as hard as water here. In no. I don't think so. I would imagine. I'm just though. assuming. I don't know. Well water, well water can be tough. I've heard in like Kitchener, Waterloo, um, acidic circumstances, Lake Mead. Yeah. Right. It, it's you get anything that's acidic that can be real tough. Um, there's other things too that we've we've seen uh, agricultural like a. I'll never forget. There was a pig barn, okay, and like the floor and all the pipes and the floor, everything was getting destroyed because of the ammonia from the urine. Really, so destructive, yeah, so destructive. And we've seen um, even fertilizer that has ammonia in it. If you have all sorts of fertilizer stored, you, yeah, there are things that are uh, that that uh, that are susceptible. I mean, I'm and again, I'm no metallurgist, but I've you know I've I've, I've seen. But it's it, factoring it into your R and D. It factors into our R&D. Sometimes it'll factor into us saying, 
don't use these kind of products there. It just, you know, can you do something else? Was your, uh, was your dad part of the, I guess, the revolution when we finally switched mostly from copper to uh, the land of PEX? Oh, yeah. In fact, um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say our mini ball valve for half-inch PEX was the first valve in North America with integral PEX connections. Really? Yeah, we had a long list of OEM How far back customers. are we talking about for that? That transition was around 97. Um, the uh, the Shell class action suit, Shell Hoist, whatever the name of the German company, with the okay. resin company. Okay. That was a, I believe, a, oh, what was it? It was an $871 million class action suit. Wow. To to stop Poly B, like done. And that's a fairly, when you're, you're getting close enough to a billion, we can just round it up. That's a, that's that's what you call a motivation. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and said that, you know, a lot of people suffered a lot of damage. You know, I talked earlier about, you know, the things you, the irreplaceable things you can lose. Um, yeah, I don't know when Poly B started. Some people said it started in the 70s, but in the 70s, I was not. I didn't, well, uh, unless it was just beginning, but it wasn't mainstream. You got to, I, I yeah. factor in mainstream when it starts hitting subdivisions and going from there. Yeah. Um, are you a copper guy? Or are you a PEX guy? Me personally? Yeah. I, I make products for both. I know you I, make products for both. Oh, yeah. I'm a copper guy, and I'll always have arguments with, with plumbers about copper, but I also see the benefits with poly. I, okay. I do see the benefits, right? But the problem is um, I'm, I'm big on flow and I'm big on purpose. Specifically, yep. if you have clients or you have projects that need volume going into certain areas, a.k.a. showers, right? So you don't need anything more than a half inch or even a reduced interior diameter for a faucet, for yep. a laundry supply, for a toilet supply. You don't need any of that. But when no. it comes to, I, I used to joke all the time in the beginning of my career where, you know, working with other brands and they had all these luxury items and everything like that, but everybody was still being water conscious and water saving yep. and, you know, we can't be wasting water and everything like that. But then they would demand low flow faucets and low flow toilets and 1.2 flush and everything like that. But give us 17,000 heads in the shower, right? So it like, it's, yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I'm, I'm guilty yeah. of that too. Listen, I, I, oh, like I, I my, saw that shower, mister. Yeah. <laughs> no, so like my shower has a few heads in it and, and occasionally I do like to just run them all at one time. And, and we're going to have this conversation with the plumbers on the show yep. uh, because there's certain restrictions and I disagree with some of the OBC and what they're talking about, how technically speaking, when you have so much volume of water going through a shower, you're supposed to have basically a well for your drain, right? And it's just like you don't necessarily need that if you build it correctly, right? Right. But, um, yeah, so I just found it strange that clients would want to save the planet, demand certain products, but then just splurge on that luxury spa waterfall of water, right? It's a bit of a do as I say, not as I do thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I um, Some people have, have said, look, you know, clearly my hair is gone, but you know, <laughs> I've talked to people who actually have hair and they have a lot of hair and they said, well, I stand in the shower for twice as long or three times as long to wash the shampoo out of my hair. So I'm still using the same volume of water I would have. It just takes me longer. Well, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Okay. So now... Others, I'm sure, would argue, well, you can adjust the head so you're increasing the velocity. So you can yep. increase the... So there's there's a lot there. There, there is, absolutely. Um, those showers are decadent. Uh, there's no question. I'm getting used to the stuff. The, the thing where I look at with some concern sometimes, and the septic guy up at the farm was saying, uh, the low-flow toilets for them are of concern because there, there's not enough water for the line carry. So he's, he's telling people, well, fill your bathtub in once in a while and just let her rip to make sure you you're, you get everything. And that's a keep smart everything move. Moving. Yeah, it's yeah. a smart move, right? So, and, and I look at it where I'm on a septic with a leaching pit. My water is not going really anywhere. It's going back into the water table. Yep. And nature will do a better job of cleaning it than yep. any, any man-made attempts will do. It's true. 
right? So, uh, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, I should be careful. I'm not a chemist. Don't shoot me. No, but I, mean, I, I also tell him, I didn't know that fact about your valve, your your poly valve being the first one on the Canadian market. The the, the PEX the PEX was the PEX we was. had poly B. Okay, um, that was fun. We started making those. That was like. The mini ball valve, what it was there, that was kind of a transition in our company because we were making these, we were making radiator valves, we had all sorts of water meter valves. That's another thing. You find a water meter valve, a tall water meter valve with a red handle, send us a picture. Even we've got other ones we don't make called the spider valve, uh, the turtle, the octopus. You find something weird and it has a dull name on it, you're thinking, what in the Sam Hill? Send us a picture. Yeah, we're curious because the, the, all the cartridges are the same. And even if it's a little nasty, we might even have like a like, like an Acme tr- thread tap. We can send you to clean the threads. Really? Yeah. She's new here. Uh, Normally, you know Candace what? wouldn't do that. <laughs> so be it. No, it's no we still have time. We still got like another 10, 15 minutes, man. I'm not done talking with you. And Good. You're yeah. hanging out for the next show as well, too. But I, I, I'd awesome, love that man. you guys are, you guys created products that basically you knew would last a certain amount of time and also understand that when it does kind of get a little bit of wear and tear the og yeah this is, so here's the thing so my dad used to go to germany to the show okay go around europe because europe always has this funky stuff yeah and we're later adopters so he went over and, and he saw these and he thought good gracious you know we've got this conventional uh supply stop the multi-turn the r19 uh, and I will make a shout out there to Robert Zell, okay. the founder of Brasscraft Manufacturing. He invented the modern flexible supply stop, I believe, in either 1936 or 1938. He was not allowed to start his company because of war rations. Mm. He started his company finally in 1946. And by creating the modern supply stop, he created an industry for millions. Smart. And then my dad looked at that. He was in Europe. He saw compact quarter turn valves. And he said, you know what? We can bring these to North America. There's a market. There's a market here. Nobody in Europe wanted to work for him because in Canada, plumbers only soldered on copper pipe. So the, the, the Europeans were saying, oh, the Canadians, you'll have to use an adapter. My dad's like, yeah, you want to learn some new words in English? Because <laughs> I'll introduce you. <laughs> This is uh, where, like, we're, we're a community. We're talking to each other, and we're understanding that your dad saw it, yeah, right? And he also saw it because he was listening to the trades. Yep. And exactly. he knew it that they would embrace that. That was it. Exactly. Simple. Like, Simple. Yeah. Still works today. So, well, it's, this is basically, this is like the... I'd be a kid in a candy store if I go to Europe and start, like, actually oh. taking a look at what's going on and where it all came from. Oh, I'd be a something. kid in a candy store. It's cool. But I no one... it. So... You couldn't disassemble these, right? So the conventional, the the R nineteen, you would you would take it apart yeah, and yeah. put it back together when it's cold. Yeah, you couldn't do it. These so these guys worked tirelessly to figure out how to make a quarter a compact supply stop that can withstand the heat of soldering, and um, and uh, and they did it, which was cool. They rolled it out in nineteen eighty four. And uh, one fun fact um, I've shared before, and I was interviewed uh, by by uh, uh, Terrence Chan, the impetus. He's on 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 IG. Yep. Um, one of the gentlemen who was the, uh, uh, was he the operations manager, I forget his proper title, uh, that was working with my dad and developing this, he was a World War II vet, and he was one of those guys that jumped off the landing craft on D-Day and lived. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a serious. So, and then this Lucky was, uh, so the straight valve, so none of these had any slip covers. This is the straight valve that we that this was the first one, and then the plumbers. So we're going back to fifties uh-huh. or sixties. No, we're going this. Yeah, th- this is nineteen eighty four. This is eighty four. This is nineteen eighty four. It was the first. It wasn't the first ball valve, but these were the first quarter turn supply stops in North America. But this gave us the ball valve, and that is when you started to see now so many right. And then the fun fact: now there were there were half turn valves. There's all sorts of valves yeah. through the ages. Yeah. But my dad said the first real ball valve, compact ball valve, was on the fuel line of a Messerschmitt fighter plane. Really? It's a bit of an infamous uh, or auspicious history, but it's, he said he told me that one day. Well, manufacturing is manufacturing, man. Well, I mean, the Germans knew how to manufacture. Yeah. It was like just something else. 
So this started out with a round body, and we're quickly told that that wasn't very good. <laughs> so we changed it to hex body. From the industry. Yeah. That's what the trade said. They, now, we loved you, it, you know, but we want a wrench. Wait till we wrench this. You're going to love to see the, uh, yeah. uh, all the teeth marks. Then we went to, uh, then it evolved, got the blue slip cover handles. Yeah. And then we had these also with red and blue handles. And a, here's a fun fact. We had a hot plate, like, you know, for like keeping plates warm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was out in the assembly area where we'd throw these on and smooth them out to warm them up so they're easier to get on. <laughs> <laughs> so, and other stuff, when you have a small business, I bet people can relate to it. So here's, 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 here's a line drawing. My dad would make these at the kitchen table. Or sorry, the dining room table. Well, that's that valve. That was like that's right? the passion for what you like. You think nothing, but that's something. That's huge. It, it's it's a lot of work. And then here he, here's a, a mock up of a price list he was putting together. It would get printed, but of course. But again, it was you know just up. write it down, draw lines, get it all organized, get it going. And now we we were a little bit cheeky because uh, so this we call this the twenty four nineteen. 24 okay 19. all right okay you know cr19 we call this the 2419c <laughs> so you know and then we we came out with a different part number later right mm. i get a chuckle out of it they brasscraft was always pretty gracious with us probably because they looked at us like a you know a fly on an elephant's tush um yeah but uh Times change, things change, businesses change. We don't ever know just, what's going to happen. That's how it works, right? Yeah, yeah. and we've known some wonderful people at Brasscraft. I don't, I, I, you know, they're, again, they created this this niche. It's not, not much of a niche anymore. They created a whole new way of, of uh, plumbing houses. It's, with, a, it's a lifestyle stops. now. It's a yeah. lifestyle for the tradespeople that actually work this, and they're the ones that have, I love that they have a lot of say. It's a terrific history. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there are a lot of great companies in the industry. You know, I don't. You know, what can I say? I don't. I don't want to make you cry. I'm just saying. No, a of, no. A lot no. of nice people out there, but there are. There's a lot of people out there. So I want yeah. everybody to know it's triple w dollvalve.com and on Instagram you can get to you, which is dollvalve ma'am, and but then also there's the, the main there's there's a dollvalve account account yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Too. So and if anybody's got any questions, but we're close to wrapping it up. I do want to share. Uh, I'll leave that alone. That's fine. I know I, I want to get to the 12 questions with you. I really huh? appreciate you sharing. I think we talked about it. Did we miss anything? Or what was it? Oh, was it? I don't even want to put up that introductory letter for these things. Yeah, was I'd love to fun? see that. I'm curious that about was, uh, that. No, the other one, one that's one, the that's the, that's the introductory. Said. So that's the sales bulletin that you guys were using. That was the one he wrote. It, that was actually September 13, 63, was his 35th birthday. Like crazy, man. Yeah. And you still have it? I have that document. Yeah. Over, yeah. There's something so to say. Look at the price individually. These 15 valves sell for 16.55. Look at that, eh? You're getting 15 But valves. if you purchase it in <laughs> Handy Pack, uh, then you, I love the sales pitch here. That's amazing. If you get it in the Handy. Let me see the Handy Pack again, Angeline. Look at that thing, huh? I wish I had one. I love oh, all this oh. history. It's so attached to the company. I love all this stuff. It's fun. My favorite thing is he closes it out. The last thing on that letter. On the letter, go back yeah. on the letter there. Oh, look how he closes it out. <laughs> Won't you try them? <laughs> it's great. I it's love a, it. It's it's just it's the entrepreneurial thing. Like you know, when you look at he, you know, we do these sort of predictive index things, and you know, for him it was like he likes to work alone. He, he's nice with people. And Right, and, but but to me, it's that kind of drive. You would probably come up the same. I'm gonna, I will predict. <laughs> but right, so that's why you do what you do. Uh, I love the same, industry. You know? I mean, yeah. I I hate the industry occasionally, but I mean, I love the industry most of the time, yeah. and I do love having uh, very interesting conversations with people that are in the industry. It's oh, that's that's cool. I, I mean, this is gonna be when I when I get dialed in and I get my buds in, I'm gonna be listening. It takes me a bit of time to, sometimes I'm out on the tractor and go on and I just put the buds in. I'm going to start listening to your podcast because there's so much you can learn about so I'll, many I'll apologize, people. I guess, for certain comments that are sometimes expressed or certain words that are expressed because uh, I give free range to everybody, right? So just by all means, say what you like. I kind of, I enjoy that. 
For me, it's water off a duck's back. Yeah. Everyone comes by who they are, honestly. I, you know, I'm proud of myself that I have managed a, a relatively profanity-free conversation because, um, well, you know, I'm not a plumber by trade, right? But I, I still mess with things, and I. But you understand us. I understand you because I, I've created new words when I've been in my garage. <laughs> right. New sounds. Yeah. New everything. <laughs> yeah. Thomas, are you ready for the 12 questions? Let's see. The, let's see Don't the, give me the answers just yet. Let more? me ask them oh. as we go. Let's see the, I'll, the, I'll give you the canned answers. answers. Okay, All right. Hit me. What's your favorite construction word? Inspection passed. That's a good one. What is your least favorite construction word? Inspection failed. <laughs> <laughs> what turns you on in construction? Quality. What turns you off? People who don't care. Yeah. What's your favorite curse word? You don't have to express it. I mean, we haven't been cursing, but. Oh, no. No? No, oh, my favorite one. How dare you? <laughs> All right. What? Now the one I've been waiting. What's your favorite vehicle? Classic muscle. Um, Where are we? Which three are we going? Which of the three are we going? So first off, uh, I love them all. I've been down to the Woodward Dream Cruise in Detroit a few times. Oh, wow. Uh, if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's every August. They estimate a million and a half people show up and over 40,000 classic cars. Wow. It is off the charts. Wow. Uh, and you're not a real gearhead if you can't say that every one of the big three has made something pretty cool. Oh, of course right? they have. Yeah. Of course. So I'm, I'm partial to Camaros. What year? Okay, it's a tough one. Because it is a I, tough one at that point. Yeah, I here's my uh, yeah. 67, 68, 70 to 72. 70, uh, 71, 72. It's a nice shape. It's beautiful, uh, but I'm still partial to 60s. I so know. I'm, my buddy's got a 69Z28, so he's going to punch me in the stomach. But Black? He, uh, it's green, and it's but it's real. It's all numbers matching, pristine wow. Amundo. Oh yeah, it's incredible. And I, I had a chance at a um, uh, was it a six was it a sixty seven SS? I really liked it. Uh, it was the RSSS, so it had the he hideaway headlights. Yeah, I was about to say. Uh, yeah. And it had the vent windows, which are lovely. Uh, and people people have never experienced vent windows. Don't know how well they actually do work. <laughs> right, they're beautiful. <laughs> Uh, that was a nice car and it had tilt steering because I need to put in seat relocators and, and then uh, tilt steering helps a whole heck of a lot. Um, I miss gear shifts, man. I miss stick. I miss, I miss all my cars got paddles and I'm like, what is this? I'm not in a boat. It's, like this, this is ridiculous. But man. your car is very civil. You're a gentleman, <sighs> but it's, I uh, want a gear shift, man. I've got to go to Europe and rent a car and you'll get a gear shift. You get a stick. It's yeah, fun. I love it. It's a nice, pleasant surprise. You're like, oh, I remember this. <laughs> and you know what's fun about some of the classic cars? They're, they're not as fast as you remember. Now some of the modern ones are nuts. I don't know what it's about. But, yeah, I read a great quote once. It said, some, it's often a, a lot more fun to drive a slow car fast because you're still rolling the gears and if it, if it can handle nicely. And, and in these days, I never thought I'd hear myself say this. we got cars that'll do zero to 60 in under three seconds. Well, the fun's over. It's and insane. It, yeah, no. like, I don't know. But, you know, people say, you're just old and stupid. I say, well, maybe. You got one of those, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What's your least favorite vehicle in the entire world? Uh, following a dump truck on the highway. Gravel. Yeah. And hearing those things on the dun, windshield. Dun, dun, dun. Although you got to have mercy for the driver. If he's empty, that can't be fun. No, I know. Yeah. True. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yeah. What construction sound or noise do you love? <laughs> That's a torch. I know. <laughs> what construction sound or noise do you hate? Nobody needs an impact driver for screws. I know. Good God. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt one day, Thomas? Uh, I'm too old now, but driving a race car. That would have been fun. Now, racing or turning left? Road course, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I still do like the boys on the ovals. That's that can be pretty intense, um, but the road courses are shifting. 
It's just driving the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. They were designed and built for a reason. I mean, uh, so what profession would you not like to do? I wouldn't want to be a doctor. Tough one. That's a tough profession. Two thumbs up to doctors. Uh, last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at those pearly gates? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> he would probably say that. <laughs> Thomas, it's been a pleasure having you on this show, man. Honestly, I love the history lesson. I still feel young talking to you, man. I just, you got a lot of love for the industry, which is what we need. And we need more people like you oh. uh, just sharing that love out there. Right. So we got a good bunch of people that work in this industry. You do. And they love it. Right. So. And you got a, You got a, You got a, You got legions of smoke and cool new plumbers. That love it. Oh, yeah. They can't awesome. wait to get into there and just start working. Yep. Problem yeah. solving, figuring things out. These guys are, you know, yeah, no, I love it. And they are and they are so welcoming to to plumbers younger than them. Yeah. And helping encourage others to get into the trade and yep. yeah, no, that's fantastic. So I'm you know, I I I stumbled into this industry and I count my blessings every day that I did. So thank you. You're doing it justice. Again, triple W dollvalve.com and on Instagram you got your handle which is uh, at dollvalve man. Yep. And then, and then the main parent one is, is just under doll valve. Yes. At doll valve, at yeah. doll valve right. Yeah. Email to reach you if or you want to share that or for, for, uh, you can DM me. Okay. On, uh, yeah. DM is always better to communicate. Anyway, DM right? works pretty well. Yeah. Uh, you can, yeah, I mean, I, my email is thomas h at doll valve.com. There's then there, but there's the sales at doll valve.com customer service at doll valve.com. Yeah. Um, those are pretty much for, for general stuff if you want something off the beaten track so it's like i can facilitate stuff there is a, you know there is a danger sometimes where other people are better at executing on stuff that, that, that i am like if it goes if something goes right to them boom it goes yeah uh, for me sometimes i might depending on where i am like maybe i'm you know climbing mount everest or i'm skydiving out of uh, one of elon musk's shuttles uh I'd have to wait till we're jumping the off the back of a pickup truck. <laughs> Probably more likely. <laughs> and I totally forgot. I mean, we can find your products everywhere, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. Right? They're, they're pretty much everywhere. I mean, they're, they're, uh, you get into some places where the it's an owner operator of the, of the distributor, or, yeah. or say if it's a hardware store, and yeah. they buy what they think is the best mix for the area. Yeah. Uh, but wholesale distributors, they, they always can, have them, right? They, they they can always get them. Yeah. Know? And then there's times when. People don't realize that there, there's something we have that could be of service in a certain area. And then, well, that can always be, we can figure stuff out. Yeah. And the other thing is when, you know, uh, you know, I guess I'm trying to overthink it. It's easy to get a hold of us. We have, we make a promise that when you call our place, you will get a, an automated greeting that says, thank you for calling Doll Valve Limited. For customer service, press one. Then within 15 seconds of that, you will be speaking to a human. To a person. Yep. So that's our, that's our commitment. So. And it's nice. Yeah, it's just nice to talk to people. Simple. Get right to the point. Yeah. And we've got a, we, we're, we're, you know, we've got a policy in our place. I think within two hours of receiving a customer email, we will respond. Wow. So we, you know, now if we experience a period of growth, well, what I would say to the gang is like we have a little campaign to tell everyone, oops, there's more demand than we ex expected, so give us four rings if you can. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all about adjusting, right? You never have the resources you need first. You, 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 know, you get the sales and then... You're just listening to the customer. That's you got all it. it is. Yeah. You're listening to the plumber. That's all you're doing. Which is what we want to go back and do. We, yeah. we kind of, we got a little bit off the track of that and I... How much time we got? No, we got to wrap it up. But I mean, I, I, I'm already started to think I was going. Yeah. Hang on a sec, Thomas. You got to start thinking about the next song you're going to be playing because when you come back, we can do more stuff. I'm in. More stuff, I'm right? psyched. So we, we'll do more stuff. That'd we'll, be a lot of fun. We're going to get everyone knows to get a hold of you. So we're we're done. We're wrapped. And and thank cool. you so much again, Thomas. Thanks, man. You're great man. It's great seeing you again and having you on the show, man. Dude. Thank you for the flowers. Thank you for the little gifts and thank you for everything. And uh, and uh, everyone, just check it out, man. That's it. Thank you, Angelina. We're out of here.